Bible song for you here. Um, hey, it's good to be a child of God, amen, people? Amen. Yeah. You know, but it's even better when you know you're a child of God and you don't get caught up in all that you know legalism, right? But but instead when you come you just uh, you just worship God from a sincere heart. Amen. You know, you don't play that church game and and, and that's the secret to it all, right? A amen. Amen. To worship God from the heart. Amen. Amen. And worship God in spirit. And uh, um, but there's some people out there, man, they need to be set free. And uh, that's what this song is uh, is all about. It's called "Let My People Go Go."
just may be here for the very first time. We want to start this service out by letting you guys know that we are so glad you guys are here today. And we truly believe God is uh, also going to bless you today. Um, there is one thing we would uh, like to ask of you, though, if you don't mind, and that is if you grab one of these little yellow cards that you see all over the place. And if you would, just throw your name on that. Tell us where you're from. That'd be cool. Uh, and if you don't mind, if you then uh, hold on to this card till the end of the service, and right on the bottom in the comment section, um, tell us what you thought. We're always kind of curious. So if you do that, that'd be great. Uh, and then you can uh, take this card and uh, uh, on your way out, you can drop it uh, in a bucket that'll be by the door. Uh, so again, uh, we just want to let you guys know we're so glad you're here. Um, but right now, you're our guest. So just sit back, hang on, and enjoy the ride. Now, everyone else knows we do have some other purposes, though, with these cards. And that is if uh, there happens to be a birthday or an anniversary or could be just about anything that you think we got to know about. Uh, well, you can put it on this card one week in advance. Uh, but the main reason we have these cards is for prayer. So if you are here and you have a need in your life, put that need down on this card and give God an opportunity to show himself strong because prayer does work. Amen, people? Absolutely. The Bible tells us this. The Bible tells us that our God is a present help in times of trouble. But it also says that sometimes we have not because we ask not. So uh, put your needs down on this card. All right. Here at the Salvation Saloon, we are a family and I get every family. But we try to make sure we always recognize each other. And by glory, I believe we've got a few salonatic birthdays. <laughs> every week it is called name that salunatic now if this is your first time here just so you do know we do call our congregation members salunatics and uh, every week uh, we try to get an old uh, picture and we throw it up there and we try to guess who it is and uh, I've got one here that I uh, think I'm gonna stump you with but we'll see how good you guys are tell me if you know who this salunatic is Fifty-three Hollies <laughs> and one Judy and one Big Mike and one Big Mike. Yeah, one big <laughs> well, let's find out. Well, the real salunatic, please stand up and God, we didn't pull anybody on that. Hey, Holly, hey, just stand up. <laughs> it is Holly. All right. Well, we do have our regular list of weekly activities in which you are all uh, welcome to join in and be a part. And I would uh, just like to mention uh, that on Wednesday at the uh, men's study, uh, they are uh, beginning a brand new study uh, this week, and it is titled, uh, What on Earth Am I Here For? Yeah! And, uh, yeah, huh? <laughs> And you know what? I think that'd be a good thing to know. Yes, uh, I So uh, if, if you guys uh, haven't been going, uh, you, uh, the uh, advisable that you show up this Wednesday to find out what's going on in your life, right? Amen? We have plenty yeah. of seats. Yeah, plenty of seats, all right. Also, coming up on October 13th, I know that's a little ways away, um, but there's going to be a, a one-day men's conference, and the, the guest speaker is Michael... Uh, Francisi, or I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, um, but he is a, a, a guy who grew up as a member of the notorious Colombo crime family, 
Um, but now I understand he belongs to another uh, family. I think, think the family of God. Amen. Um, and we'll be talking about that later today also. Uh, and uh, this guy here, actually, if you watch uh, like some of the uh, documentaries on, on uh, you know, yeah, History Channel and, and about uh, you know the crime families and stuff, uh, this is always the go-to guy. He's, he's always on those uh, shows. Um, and it's uh, really cool to uh, uh, see that uh, he is now brother uh, in Christ. And so we know there's got to be just an incredible testimony uh, behind this guy's story. So uh, I think it would be great for us to get a group of guys uh, to go. Uh, it's uh, not very far away. It's a one-day uh, conference. And the reason that I am letting you uh, know early is if you notice uh, on the uh, pur under purchase tickets, um, the, the price is going to go up as, as time goes by. And so I just want you guys to be uh, aware of that. So we're going to try to jump on that and, and uh, um, try to get things going early. Anyways, if you are interested, I uh, see Rob or see Grizz after the service, and uh, they, they'll have some uh, informational flyers for you. And uh, I think it'd be good if we can get a, a mess of us to go. I uh, also had a quick little request from uh, Pam Biagini, who uh, has a uh, card, a birthday card, next door that she'd like all you guys to sign. And it's a special card because it's for her father's 100th birthday. Oh. And, uh, so if you guys remember after the service, if you go over there and, and sign that uh, for him, that would be awesome. And next Sunday, um, next Sunday we are going to be uh, taking a break uh, from our uh, Roman study that, that we've been doing and uh, we're going to have Jace, uh, the Jace Harrell Band it is going to be here next week to, uh, to bless, bless us all with some great uh, gospel country music. Um, and a lot of you guys know who Jace is and uh, um, the, the band is incredible. You'll all be uh, so blessed if, if you show up and uh, um, a little bit about him um, me and Rob was kind of struggling to throw this up in the last minute but all, I, I know that he is um, uh, was selected by a country gospel uh, as a country gospel entertainer of the year like multiple times I mean this guy uh, is, is so talented um, but even better than that is the man has such a, a sweet spirit and has such a love for his Lord, and uh, I mean, he's just a great guy, great brother, and uh, so next week would be a, a good week to fill up some of these empty seats. Hey, what's up with this, right? Um, so next week, let's see what we can do and bring some people in here, um, and like I said, we're all going to be uh, blessed. Uh, amen? amen? All right. Okay, that is all I got, so right now, if I can get Yusef up here to pray God's blessing on the remainder of a happy hour service, we'll then continue with God's word. Yeah. Rob, you're getting so much better at your job every week. I'm so give Rob a round. Great job, God works. Right when we need someone to do something, someone comes right along and fills it for us. Hallelujah. Man, what a week it's been. You know, uh, my daughter, I don't know if you ever see her in the back, she's learning words really, really quickly. Uh -oh. uh, yeah, right? <laughs> uh -oh. But, you know, the word she says more than anything is no. I don't know about you guys. That grinds my ears. I go, Annabelle, you know, you want kind of a hug? No. You want, you, you want to come sit on my lap? No. The only time I don't get a no is when it involves food. That's my daughter. No doubt about that in my mind. I go, you want to eat lunch? Oh, yeah, don't pick me up, Daddy. Yeah. Oh, man, it's been a crazy ride. I thank God every day for my family. Oh. Amen. 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 Thank you for our other family, too, our church family. Hallelujah. God gave me like 10 dads. They always threaten me when I do something wrong. So, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, anyways, let's keep it going. This is the time where we take up our offering. If you're making out a check, please make it to the Salvation Saloon. We do accept debit and credit card next door after the service. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Dear most gracious and holy Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day and this beautiful weather you gave us. I ask you to keep the rain off of us, Lord God, while we head home. I ask you to just be with this service, anoint this message, just instill it in our lives, Lord God. Let it impact us and let us use it. 
I ask you to bless this offering and the giver. May it grow and multiply. May it be used to further your kingdom. Be with us in all we do and make us be beacons in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. song here, uh, I have to tell you about the song a little bit. I wrote this song when I was in prison. It's called the Quiet Time. You're in prison, I don't know if you, uh, some of you in here have been in prison, but if you've never been in prison, I'll tell you that there's no quiet time in prison. Yeah, everybody's wild and crazy and I'm yelling and screaming and the only time it's quiet is when you're sleeping and then it's not even quiet. But on Saturday morning, Early Saturday morning, I would get up real early, and as soon as they would clear the count, I'd be the first one out in the yard, and I'd go over to the AP building, and I'd check out my guitar, and I would go to a little prayer garden that we, that we uh, uh, would meet and pray at, and I wrote this song. God gave me this song, and I named it Quiet Time, because it was the only time that I could get any quiet time, and go something like this.
Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. So as Paul said, and as you know, we always like to recognize each other, but we also like to recognize sometimes when we have some special guests. And we have a couple here today, and they're going to hate me for doing this, but too bad. Um, Jim and Paulette Livey are right there. These two here, if you've ever been to Inside Out down in St. Pete, where we have Inside Out on the first Saturday of the month, they're responsible for that whole building and everything that goes on there. And with a very small congregation, 30 people or less, they're putting out thousands of pounds of food to four or 500 families a month, right? Yeah, but you guys help us quite a bit. Yeah, but I mean, it's amazing what you guys do. So we just wanted to give you a warm welcome to the saloon. They finally got a chance to break away and come be with us on a Sunday morning. So we're blessed that you're here and we hope that you had a great time with us. God bless you. We love you. flies when you're having fun. Amen? Yeah. Halfway through happy hour, man. All right. Oh, um, you know, that awesome song that, that uh, yeah. Buzz just played. Yeah. And, and I just love it when... Um, when, when uh, we do our own songs, and uh, uh, sometimes it, you know, may not be something that would be a, a, a bestseller, um, but you know, it makes a big difference when uh, we know the story behind that song and we know that it that it comes from the heart. Amen, people. Amen. And, yes. uh, yeah, that was such an awesome uh, story. And for those of you who don't know about the story, um, it, it really is an incredible one. Um, that not only shows the, uh, the grace of God, um, but, but the power of God to, to set us free. And in Buzz's yeah. case, it was in more ways than one. Because um, he should not be uh, outside those bars. Um, but God set him free. And so uh, let's, let's just praise God. Yeah. Praise God. All right. Um, I want to praise God. Last week, all right, we've been doing this uh, study in Romans chapter 8, uh, and, and we do a, a verse by verse uh, study. And uh, after Paul had uh, established us as, as, um, uh, as all, uh, established us as, as all being sinners, right? Sinners by choice and also sinners by nature, right? Because we've all been born into the family of Adam. Okay, not the Adam's family. Um, <laughs> But the uh, family of Adam, all right, which Paul established it in Romans uh, chapter five and then verse twelve when he said this. He said, "Sin entered uh, entered the world through one man, and that one man was Adam." Right. So uh, we all have uh, good old Adam to to thank for our inherited sinful condition. And since the, the wages of sin was death, then death came to all men, okay, both physically and spiritually. Right? But because spiritual death is separation from God, well, that's when the God who so loved the world, well, he had to do something. And, uh, he had to devise a plan. And in Romans uh, chapter 5 and verse 18, Paul actually presented that plan uh, to us when he said this. He said, just as the result of one sin, okay, by Adam, was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness by Jesus was justification that brings life to all men. Right. So uh, by Adam's disobedience, sin and death was imputed to all men. But by the obedience of Jesus, forgiveness and life was imputed to all men. And uh, last week when we uh, began this in, in Romans, uh, began Romans eight um, in, in verse one last time, uh, Paul confirmed that when he said this, he said, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So when we put it all together, it was our first birth that condemned us, right? But it was our second birth, right? Our, our born again experience that uh, Paul said last time actually entered us into the very family of God, right? Just as 
uh, it said in John uh, chapter 1, uh, where it said this, it says that as many as have received Jesus, to them God gave the right to become the children of God. That's pretty awesome, right? Um, pretty incredible. And so today as we now kind of pick up where we left off, um, Paul is going, to, um, is going to continue to elaborate on that, uh, that adoption um, that has uh, uh, taken place. And uh, we pick things up in verse 6 uh, as he says this. Paul said, The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit. Okay, our born-again spirit. And He testifies with our spirit, telling us that we are God's children. So we see there's some personal interactions or, or communication that takes place between us and God. And, and later, Paul is actually going to expound on that in, in uh, much greater detail. Um, but as we mentioned uh, last time, um, it, it's important to, to know that to have that, that personal interaction and relationship with God, well, it is important that we submit to the things of God and not to the things of our flesh. Amen? Right, because it's the uh, it, it's the one that we submit to and feed that is going to end up taking control of our lives and it is going to rule in our hearts. And again, that is that spiritual battle, right? That that spiritual uh, tug and pull that uh, uh, Paul has been talking about here in the uh, last few chapters. But as Paul said last time in verse two, we do possess the power to live in victory over the desires of our flesh, right? Because through Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. Through Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. And so it's important that we you know, recognize and tap into that power that the Holy Spirit came into our, our lives to provide. Amen? And, and it's certainly encouragement, uh, some great encouragement here, as, as Paul just said in verse 16, um, to, to be aware of just who we are, right, in our relationship with God. And, and that is, we are genuinely, in, in every aspect, the sons and, and, and daughters of Almighty God. Amen. Right? And, and we are now beneficiaries. That means we are now beneficiary, beneficiaries of all the family privileges. And guess what? Paul's going to confirm that as we move on to verse 17 because Paul now says this. He says, if we are now his children, if we are now God's children, he says, then we are his heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in the sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. All right. So what's it like to be an heir of God? Well, when I think about that, I think of the prodigal son story. Right? Where you've got this totally depraved sinner right, who recognizes that he has violated his relationship with his father and, and he is no longer worthy right, to be his son. But yet, right, when, when the father sees him, what happens? The father, he, he runs to him. He runs to meet his son and with tears running down his face, he, he just grabs him and he embraces him and he, he kisses him, right? And, and without a single lecture or any kind of uh, uh, condition attached to, to his return, the father places on him the family robe and, and then the family ring is, is placed on his finger. And with these words of grace, the father then makes this declaration and that is uh, to say, you are my son. You are my son and all I have is yours. Amen. All I have is yours. And how does that relate to us? Well, it, it relates to us because that is the exact same love and grace that we will also receive from our Father in heaven. Amen? Amen. Because when we as sinners experience right that spirit of adoption, well, as joint heirs with Jesus, we too will receive all the privileges of a true son. Alright. What will that inheritance actually look like? Well, the Bible can only tell us this. 
The Bible tells us that eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the awesome things that God has prepared for them that love Him. And, and so all I can really say to, to you guys today is, man, it is going to be you know, far better than anything that we could ever possibly imagine. Amen? Amen. But, Paul also said this, and, and that is that while we're still here on this earth, we will be subject to some suffering. But about those sufferings, in verse 18, well, Paul had this to say. He said, I consider that our present sufferings are not even worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And so, regardless of what this life throws our way, and it is not going to matter in comparison to that glorious inheritance that God will, will have waiting for us. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Now let me expand on that thought just a little bit. Um, before Jesus left this earth to, to, to be with His Father, well, He had a conversation with His, uh, with his disciples, with His followers. And, and this is what He told them. He said, I am leaving to prepare a place for you. But, He said, if I go to prepare a place for you, then you can know I'm going to come back for you so that where I am, you can be also. Alright, this is what I want you to think about. If it took God six days to create this beautiful world that we live in, right? But yet He's now been preparing a place for us for 2,000 years. Man, we're living in a garbage can, right? Compared to what is going to be up there waiting for us. Amen? Amen. Compared to what God has in store for us. But again, as Jesus said, in this world, there will be tribulation. But to that tribulation, Jesus then said this. He said, but be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. In this life, you're going to have troubles. You're going to go through uh, tribulations. But be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. All right. What in the world does that actually mean? I mean, what is it right, that actually causes us to be able to face our tribulations in life and do it with some good old cheer? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's because Jesus' victory over the world and that was also our victory over the world. Amen? Amen. Right? Because as, as Paul just said, as joint heirs with Christ, we will now also share in His glory and in His accomplishments. And, and you know what that is? That is a picture, uh, another picture of grace. Right? Because everything, right, from our right standing with God and, and our adoption into His family, as well as that, uh, that inheritance uh, of all our, our God possesses, well, it didn't come, way, come, come by, by way of a single effort on our part. But it all came to us upon the coattails of Jesus, right? Whose accomplishments and glory we now share in by God's grace. Amen? Amen? And that's why the Bible calls Jesus the author and finisher of our, finisher of our faith. Because He did it all. He did it all, and He did it all for us. Freely and willingly. And because of that, despite the sufferings in, in life, we have the hope of all God's eternal promises to look forward to. And check this out in verse 19. As Paul now says this, he says, uh, he says that even creation, he says, waits in eager expectation also for the sons of God to be revealed. Even creation, right, is looking forward to our eternal promises to be fulfilled. And here's why. In verse 20, as Paul says, for the creation was subjected to frustration. Not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. Alright, here's the thing. When man sinned and rebelled against God, right, the, the curse of sin, subjected by God, will it cause nature to then rebel against man. So, here's the thing. Sin, man, it affected everything. It affected everything. Right? Such as, as the animal life. Right? The animal life that, you know, back in the garden, well, you know, it, 
It lived in harmony together. But now because of sin, all those animals, well, they're preying on each other. And, and since the ground was also cursed, well, the, the plant life and, and, and crops, right, that once sustained itself under, you know, those perfect conditions, well, they were now subject to the various uh, environmental conditions, right, such as temperature and, and drought. And, and so they needed to be tended to. You know, just as Noah said, Noah said that, you know, man now had to work hard for his food by the painful toil of his own hands. And, and so uh, the result of sin was that, you know, everything was just uh, negatively altered. Just totally uh, and, and negatively altered. And, and so with all creation, right, in that state of chaos and, and decay, as a result of man's sin, um, as we go to verse 21, uh, we also find that um, they do share in a hope. Uh, the hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and be brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. All right. The day is coming, people. Right? When all the effects of sin it is going to be removed. Right? And, and as we, who are the children of God, are liberated right from the bondage of these corrupted fleshly bodies, well, so will creation be liberated from its corrupted bondage. And, and we know that because in, in 1 John chapter 3, it, it uh, um, tells us that that is why the Son of God was revealed. Right? The Son of God was revealed to destroy the works of the devil. And that's sin, right? That is the results of sin. And just check out this, this slide and verse here from Isaiah um, that kind of describes you know, how things will be when that nature is, is liberated. It says the wolf and the lamb will feed together along with the lion. For they shall not hurt or destroy each other in my kingdom. Wow. Sounds like heaven. Amen? Sounds like heaven. Well, that's what it's going to be like. That's what it's going to be like. Lion and, and the lamb. The wolf and the lamb. The Republican and the Democrat. It's going to, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, the Yan yeah, the Yankee fan and the Red Sox. <laughs> How to comprehend. All right. And then Paul says this in verse 22. They're talking about his liberation. He says, We know that the whole creation has been groaning, right, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Now, what's interesting here about the, the labor pains of creation is that no different from the labor pains of a mother. Right, those pains are, are going to increase and intensify as the birth draws near. Amen? That's how it works. Right? But with the labor pains of creation, well, they are going to increase and intensify as the return of Christ right? and its redemption draws near. And uh, so I thought just to show you guys kind of where we're at on God's prophetic clock, um, well, in Matthew chapter 24, it actually talks about right, those labor pains of creation to what Jesus calls the signs of the time, right, or the signs of the, the end times. And so as we're closing here today, I'm just going to kind of throw out uh, a couple of those signs, and, and I wish I could be more thorough, but we just uh, don't have the, the time. Um, and, and even the ones that I am going to uh, mention here today, uh, I'm only going to be able to uh, elaborate on briefly. Um, but I think the uh, by looking at, at prophecy, um, man, it certainly points uh, to the uh, uh, existence of God, I'm telling you. It, it's, it's just incredibly amazing. Um, because when you, you, you put it all together, it's not like you got uh, you know, a few here and there that are coming to pass but it's all coming to pass at the very same time. I mean, it's just an incredible thing. 
And um, anyways, in Matthew 24, uh, I'll start out with this. It says in the last days, it, it talks about how, uh, how the, uh, uh, the intensity and, and frequency of natural disasters will, will be in, increased. And um, guess what? That is exactly what has been taking place as natural disasters are actually up by 400% in just the last two decades alone. Uh, in an article from the NBC Science News, it specifically states that the number of great earthquakes, okay, what's a great earthquake? Well, it is uh, an earthquake that is uh, of the magnitude of seven or higher on the, the Richter scale. And if you don't know what that means, it just means it, it's an earthquake that's gonna cause some major destruction. Well, those earthquakes, right, of that degree, um, NBC Science News said that uh, they have nearly tripled in just the last decade alone, and by an increase of 265% over the average rate of the previous century. Now, along with that, there has also been an increase in, in hurricanes um, that are uh, also, right, more intense and, and uh, we're seeing them much more frequently, um, actually, than any other time in recorded history. Uh, another birth pain of creation that's mentioned in Matthew 24 is that it says that there's going to be wars in the last days. All right, always been wars, right? But the wars that we've experienced in the last 100 years have claimed more lives than at any other time in all of the history of man. Since World War II, there have been over 250 major wars that have killed 23 million people. And right now, there are currently over 30 major conflicts taking place in our, our world today. But Matthew 24 also spoke of world wars, right? Which is interesting because when that was, was written up until actually a, a short time ago, man, the world has always been just too small to ever have an actual world war. But in the last hundred years, we've experienced two of them. Right? And the third, according to experts, is rationally inevitable. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It also states that there will be a falling away of the faith in the last days. And sure enough, in the last 50 years, there has been a dramatic worldwide decline in church attendance. And even in America, right, where there used to be a church on every single corner, well now those churches are all closing by the day. And, and denominations are actually wondering how they're going to survive. And along with that, right, that, that moral compass that the, the church has always provided, well, as it's now becoming less and less effective, well, Matthew 24 tells us that sin, on the flip side, and the acceptance of sin, well, it's going to increase in the last days. I actually said that men in the last days will become lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Tell me if that doesn't describe our world today. And just check out these statistics. I, I found this and thought it was pretty, pretty interesting, or whacked out, I guess. But um, here's a st t statistic on the pornography industry. Uh, did you know that 35% of internet downloads contain some sort of pornographic uh, matter? And according to Forbes magazine, the porn industry is a $100 billion a year business. Let me give you an idea of how big that actually is. Well, you could take the combined income, right, of the entire sports entertainment business. All right, what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the, the National Football League, the National Basketball Association, the National Hockey League, and, and Major League Baseball, as well as uh, boxing and, and, and all the mixed martial arts, right, and all the other things that you can think of that, that you can throw in there. Well, you could take their combined income and it would still be less than the money that is being generated by the porn industry. Is that crazy? Is that crazy? 
also with this falling away of the faith. Well, Matthew 24 tells us this. It tells us that it is going to lead to a growing hatred of Christians. Right? Because people are going to be you know, just so consumed with their sin. They're not going to like us. And it says that that is going to result in an increase of, of persecution. Now, this isn't something that we see a lot of here in America. All right? Now, we, we run around, we think we got it bad, right? Someone laughs at us because we go to church and come home crying to our wives and we think it's bad, right? It's the end of the world. Well, it is nothing compared to what is going on in, in the rest of the world. Because here's the facts. Uh, in, in actuality. In actuality, there have been more Christian martyrs in this last century than all the previous centuries combined. Combined. And, and here's a statistic from this year alone. Right, The first reporting period of, uh, of 2018, it tells us this. It says there have been 3,066 Christians killed, 1,252 have been abducted, 1,020 were raped or sexually harassed, and there were 793 churches that were attacked. Now tell me that we don't take our faith for granted here in America. But, you want to know what the most obvious sign is that points to the soon return of Jesus? Well, I'll tell you what that is. That is, that is Israel. All you've got to do is look at the nation of Israel. I'm talking the same Israel that Jesus said, that in, back in his day, Jesus said that they would be driven from their land and they would be dispersed throughout the whole world and they, they would become a people without a nation. And just as Jesus said, uh, said that it would happen. Well, in 70 AD it did, as Titus took siege on Jerusalem, and, and history tells us that over a million Jews were killed, and 97,000 were taken into slavery. And from that point on, just as Jesus said, right, they were literally scattered throughout the whole world. They were literally a, a people without a nation. But here's the thing with that. That should have been the end of the Jewish people. Because never in the history of mankind has any people ever been removed from their nation and still were able to maintain their ethnic heritage. It's never happened. But yet, in the case of the Jews, it was still, they've been, uh, for 2,000 years after that, nearly 2,000 years after that, they had been scattered, right? And, and along with the fact that during that time, there were still many attempts to just totally eradicate them from, from history. But, prophecy said they would survive. And prophecy also said that uh, it would be a sign of the last days that, you would, uh, that we would see them return and actually reclaim their nation. And here's a quote from God himself in, in Ezekiel 34, 13. As he said, I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries and I will bring them back into their land. And sure enough, as absurd, absurd a, a prophecy as, as that was, it was fulfilled, right? And, and Israel became a nation again in 1948. And then against all, all odds again, they regained biblical Jerusalem in 1967, right? When they defeated the combined troops of seven Arab nations. Seven Arab nations, right, joined forces and, and attempted to wipe them off the face of the earth. And you know what? When that took place, the world thought that was exactly what was going to take place. Because this little country was so outnumbered and it was so uh, overmatched militarily. Everyone thought that was the end of, of Israel. But by nothing short of a miracle, in just six short days, Israel just totally uh, annihilated those seven combined nations. And, you know, if you think about that, six days, I mean, how appropriate is it that, you know, it took them seven days and 
they were then able to rest on the uh, six days, and they were then able to rest on the seventh. Well, let me tell you, God was in it. That's why that happened, man. God was in it. Right? And, and when you really look into it, um, man, the whole thing, uh, and, and I told you some of these stories before, but the whole thing was just one miraculous event after another. It was just incredible. You could not deny right, that God's hand was, was working to protect that country. And check out this, this slide right here. It's an actual newspaper article um, that uh, headlines actually a comment from their enemy. And on top it says, Tell, uh, tells how uh, hourly miracles that are keeping Israel safe. And here's a comment from one of their enemies. Their God changes the path of our rockets in midair. Amazing. Amazing. And there's just so many other stories. Why? Because our God is alive and well on planet Earth. Amen? He's still changing lives. He's still meeting needs. He's still performing miracles. So... I mean, it is just so obvious when, you know, you really look at all those prophecies in the Bible. Um, it's just so obvious that, you know, you, you just have to come to the realization that God's Word is truly faithful and true. God's Word is faithful and true. All right. I find this also rather interesting. You, you see where they, the amount of land they had before the war. Um, they didn't even start this war, but... Look what happened afterwards, six days later. God expanded their land. God expanded their land. He gave them biblical Jerusalem. Alright. That's as far as we're going to go today. And like I said, we're going to take a little break next week as we're going to worship God with the Jace Harrell Band. And, and again, I mean, that is going to be such a great uh, blessing. Amen. Um, so make sure that you invite others to, to enjoy that, that blessing. So let's fill this place up next uh, next week. Um, and then on the following week, then we're going to come back here. I thought I was going to finish this today, but it, no way was that going to happen. Um, and, and then the following week, we'll come back and we'll finish chapter 8, which is just such an, an awesome chapter. Um, Paul's going to be, uh, is going to continue to, to provide us um, with just you know, more great scriptural and, and encouragement. Um, for who? For us. For those who are in Christ Jesus. And just to give you a sneak preview of a, a verse and an uh, encouraging verse that we're actually going to see uh, next time. And uh, that is a verse that will tell us this. It will tell us that if God be for us, then who can ever stand against us? Amen? Amen. If God be for us, then who Amen. can ever stand against us? Amen. Man, it is good to be a child of God. Amen. Amen. Right? Okay, um, if I can have Susan Carson come up and close in prayer, um, then you guys can all be released and uh, we'll, we'll allow you to go and enjoy a, a, a God-blessed day and a, a God-blessed week uh, to follow. Uh, so, um, who did I say? Oh, I meant Susan Hips. Oh, poor, oh, 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 poor girl. I'll give you a hug on the way out. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I am sorry. All right. Hope you enjoyed the Word of God today. We're going to have uh, Jace next week, and, and we're just going to have an awesome time as, a, as the family of God is going to gather together, and, and we're just going to have a blast worshiping God. Amen? Amen. So, again, invite people here, and uh, uh, I pray you have a blessed week, and I, I love you, and I'll see you next Sunday. and I came across Romans, I think it was 17, where uh, we are heirs of God's, uh, not only for all the goodness, but also uh, he 
for his suffering. And I'm glad that Paul mentioned that this morning um, as we're studying Job in Women's Bible Study. And yeah, we had heard a lot of goodness from God, but look what he did for us. And uh, we have to share in that suffering as well. Amen. So we're coming today, just a final prayer. Lord, thank you for this church, for Paul's message. And please take us all home safe and bring everybody back next week. Thank you. Amen. Amen.